Hey everybody, welcome back. Listen, I did not. Hey everybody, listen. I apologize for not getting any more videos out on Sunday and Monday for the Self Reliance Festival. Uh, Sunday got really busy and, and just kind of lost track of time. And then Monday we were on the road, get, didn't get back till nine, and we stayed up till what midnight talking. You got a butterfly. We've got hundreds of these butterflies that hatched uh, floating around the property. They're not good butterflies. <clears throat> they're oh. they're bean larvae. And so I've been letting the chickens free range and try to eat as much as they can. And they, they have literally taken us from thousands to hundreds. So I'd like them all to be gone. But anyway, that's not what the video is about. So Darren from Hacks from the Homestead. <coughs> Darren from Hacks for the Homesteader and I drove down to Camden, Tennessee to special operations equipment and went to the Self-Reliance Festival and we had a blast. Now, I want you to know I failed as a YouTuber while down there. <laughs> I took a couple hours worth of footage with one of his cameras because I left the other one up here which didn't get used by the way. I couldn't. Nothing was charged. <laughs> and n literally none of the the footage was usable. It was I was really depressed. But that's okay. If if you want to see what the festival was like, go to Living Free in Tennessee or Special Operations Equipment and they've got all kinds of videos up. In fact, if you go to Special Operations Equipment or SOE for now, that's just a mouthful. If you go to SOE uh, right now, they've got day one and t day two all the tent lectures out uh, to be seen. Those are going to be taken down at some point and put behind a paywall whenever they get all the all the different presentations buses up. So if you want to see them, you need to go do it like tonight. Or be willing to support a homestead and pay to see them. Yeah, this is true. Um, so, let's see. How should we, should we just start from the beginning? Yeah, start, start. So, I literally asked a question tonight because when you got home and he was feeding me full of information, I was just like, okay, I don't understand. There was so much information coming in. I had questions today. I asked Aaron from Hex from the Homesteader. Like, can you just copy me in on that email so that I can go through things? And then I asked a question tonight, and he said, were you paying attention to nothing that I said? And I was like, there was so much information that you threw at me, I'm just completely confused. So let's start over. And so, she, And but, she has to go find the answer to that question after we're done with this, because I still haven't gotten it. Right. And I, I apologize for my voice. I, I've got hay fever. The pollen count's just been terrible. Right. If you take allergy medicine, it would help. I did. I took Benadryl. No, I've got other stuff. So, um, so anyway, so what? So you guys got there the first night was Billy's butcher class, and well, actually we we left Thursday afternoon, and it took about eleven hours, and I drove the whole way down there, and I'm gonna tell you that. Dang, Darren couldn't even take the wheel for a little bit. I even didn't, Jesus took the wheel. I didn't let him. Oh, uh, okay. See, that could be a problem. But. I found out that that drive is about an hour, hour and a half too long to do in one stint anymore. Mm -hmm. it used to be a time when I could make that drive no problem uh, anymore. It's I, I got to have somebody with me and break it up. So we got there, and we did not have a hotel room Thursday night. So we were going to sleep in the uh, in the Jeep, and Darren couldn't get comfortable, so he just grabbed his sleeping bag and went over in the woods right next to us and slept in the woods in his sleeping bag. Go me, <laughs> me, I slept. I slept in the driver's seat just fine. I got five uninterrupted hours of sleep. So I felt really good, and so we got up in the morning, and we were literally waiting outside of Billy's door when when him and William woke up. Now, for those of you who haven't haven't watched the perm pasture uh, videos uh, from the festival, Darren and Darren and Billy are really good friends. They've known each other other for decades. So that's why uh, he was invited down to help, and that's why Billy let me come come tagging along. So I met I met Billy and William, and we talked for about 10, 15 minutes. Then we headed over to the venue, and we got there in uh, the SOE compound. And it is a we we were trying to decide what what makes a compound, and I think it's having a gate. 
Really? I we, we have a compound? I, I, well, no, ours isn't completely enclosed in, by fence. Okay. But yeah, having, well, having been... So we're just on the verge of being crazy. Yeah, we could, we could, <laughs> we're not crazy, but we could, we could fence the entire house in and we, we'd have a compound. Mm. But it, it's, it was a really nice venue, uh, lots of space. They had a great big gravel parking lot. Mm -hmm. They've got a, a Morton style building for their, their, uh, their manufacturing plant. And John Willis, the owner of SOE, has been doing uh, permaculture since he moved in there six years ago. And man, I'll tell you what, he has done so much with that property. Awesome. So when he, uh, we had a chance after the after the butchering class on Thursday to talk to him, but I'll, I'll get there in just a second. Okay, let's talk about the butchering class. Okay, so you, on your video, you posted on um, your short that, and not the, the first one you talked about doing it, the second one was... I'm learning so much. I've been doing this. I know how to do this. I didn't know this much. And I think at that time, if I remember correctly, Billy was making cuts and doing that kind of right, thing, had things right. out on the table. So, so here's my impressions on the class. Uh, first off, Billy said that very rarely do you have a class like that where you dispatch the animal and you go through the entire process. He said, he said 99% of the time, the the animal is already dispatched and and field dress. Well, his class field dress it, and he was hands on. He had him put black gloves on, and people were taking turns with the knife and doing, uh, doing the process themselves, which is the best way to learn. And Billy was given commentary and, and instructions along the way, and and like like Angela said, I I can't tell you how many large animals I butchered, probably 30, 40 maybe. You know, between deer and sheep, and everything. Um, so, I was watching it. And I was learning stuff. But here's here's why I was learning stuff. So Billy learned to be a, a a butcher from a place in Kansas City called the Local Pig, which is the premier butcher shop in Kansas City. And he had a, a French that there was a French butcher that worked there that that was like world renowned at the time. And he taught Billy how to do it. So Billy Billy knows what he's talking about. Where where when the class was over, the participants were conversational. Billy was fluent in, in being a butcher. So he it took longer than normal to, to butcher the pig, but he was also instructing people, and they were taking turns and all that. But I'll tell you what, the, what I, was learned, I learned stuff from the actual butchering class, but more importantly, watching him interact with the crowd. If you ever get a chance to, to go to one of his classes, I highly recommend it because he... <coughs> He's got to be one of the best instructors I've seen in, in a very, very long time because not only does he hold the class's attention, but whenever he's talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody or they're asking a question, they're the most important person in the room. And it's it's a very rare instructor that can do that. And I told him, he, he we were talking at dinner one night and he said something and I told him that and he's very humble about it. He really is. And... and I think that's just what makes him so likable. You know, okay, let's get back to what you learned. We know Billy is a great guy. Let's go. No, that's what I learned. I learned how to how to give a class. Okay. That's literally what oh. I learned how to do. Okay. I, I, I well I know how to give give classes. Uh, I learned how to do it better. Okay. And I learned how to do the butcher butchering better. You know, and there were about I think there were thirty two people maybe, somewhere in the upper twenties, lower thirties, and. Uh, to a person, they walked away learning something. And and the the thing that struck me about the class was there were people that were still living in an apartment and were not. They weren't even preppers yet. They were just they were they were awake, and they were they were looking to, to how to become a prepper. And there were veteran homesteaders there that had been doing it for years, and they said the same thing I said. They that they learned they actually learned some tricks on how to butcher. We've been we've been made or I should I shouldn't say we. I've been wasting a lot of meat in in my butchering, and I learned how to economize on it. Because as Billy says, I use all my meat when I butcher my if, chickens. Yeah, but the chicken's way different than a oh, sheep or a okay. deer. Okay, all right. It's, it's way different. Okay. It the skills different. you need are the same, but the amount the amount of, of meat you can you get don't off have to it, defend yourself. I got it. I'm gonna edit that out because you didn't have to say that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where was I? Anyway, 
So the class was over, and after the class was over, uh, it was probably 3 30, 4 o'clock maybe, and uh, John Willis was in and out. He was busy getting the venue ready with uh, Nicole Sauce, and uh, he came over and started talking, and we got a chance to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one and, and, you know, there were three or four of us in the group, and and I'll tell you what, if you watch his videos, he, he can initially come off as a very brisk person, you know, kind of, kind of, I don't know how to say it. The, the what you see on the video on the on his YouTube channel is who he is but in person you don't get that roughness that that he's very direct but he's also he's also very well spoken and he, and, and, and he does a good job communicating and uh, I did not realize how successful he was he's he's very modest about his his wealth and uh, the only way if if you if you were to talk to him and spend time on there on, on the compound, the only way you would know he is as rich as he is is because he likes his toys and he likes he likes very eclectic toys. And his if you ever get a chance to go to their their manufacturing plant, he's got the the wildest stuff in there. Uh, his his gym, if you watch the live feeds, have stuffed giraffes, stuffed lion. There's little tchotchkes all over the place just little hidden and you're walking along and you, you you're like hey the the weirdest one was somebody gave him a backpack with his face on it <laughs> and and it had it's got hair <laughs> like his beard uh -huh. that hangs down below the backpack and it, his head's about this big and amanda his wife moves it around the the, the warehouse at different times just to just to freak people out and and the first time i saw it it was hanging up and i i kind of looked around and I, and I was like whoa what, what is that and then amanda told us the story and, and uh, you know you guys and so let that be an example too so i've worked in in a business for a long time where i'm around a lot of different people some of the most successful people that you will ever meet will show up in an old beater and overalls and a t-shirt and just look rough and you think i don't want to waste my time with that this be a lesson to you. Some of us that uh, are walking around like that, we're probably the best ones that you want to talk to. <coughs> so, um, in fact, going back, going back to the the modesty, the I mentioned something about it to some people that were longtime followers of his, and uh, they said the only time they'd ever seen him flaunt his wealth, so to speak, was he did a video. So he's got he's got this thing. If you upset him during a live feed. He turns your name into a coupon code, <laughs> and he did a video, and he's got a couple Porsches and a Land Rover, and he did a video one time. He said, "Okay," and I'm just gonna use names. I don't know who they were. Bobby S, you bought me this Porsche. Thank you very much, cause you're a hater. <laughs> Quentin Q, you bought me this Land Rover, because you're a hater, and and he just he was he had a lot of fun with it from what they said. You know, but he's he's a very uh, he's a very astute businessman, and he he is he's not one of those guys that that holds it close to his chest. He he shares what he has with people, not only not only in a material manner, but also in a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? Knowledge. In a knowledge, yeah, in, in sharing knowledge. You know, and and let's let's talk to let's talk about the proper right way to run a business as far as I'm concerned. So his door is open and if you want a job, you walk in there and ask. And he tells you he does not want to know your name for 90 days. If the warehouse staff gives you a nickname, then he'll learn it. I've seen that. He, he actually says it on a video. <laughs> he starts he starts his people out at $15 an hour. If they make it to 30 days, they get bumped up to 20. If they make it 60 days, uh, they get thirty dollars an hour. Now I'm telling you right now, I'm an IT professional, and that's higher than my hourly rate. And there, and now these people, he he trains them. Uh, there's one, there's one lady there, Rosie, who Rosie, if you're watching this video, you are a hoot, and I really enjoyed meeting you. She said she knew absolutely nothing about using a sewing machine, mm -hmm. and they taught her everything she needs to know, mm -hmm. and she's been there almost a year. You know, she was she was one of the, she was actually one of the vendors at the at the at the festival. <coughs> but you know, and he said, 
he said that that even the, oh and and then what's more is he's got a professional chef that comes in and, and cooks breakfast and lunch every day for his employees and they can eat for free and he's got a gym on site which is probably it's a little cramped i'm not gonna lie it's a little cramped but it's probably well more well equipped than a lot of gyms that you pay to go to and he allows his workers while on the clock to work out now one of the things he said was was he watches people and if they're not working out within the first two weeks i mean like physically working out like this uh he can tell that they're not going to last he said he said nine times out of ten they do not last you know, and he's with with all those amenities and the, and the good working conditions. He says he still can't get people to stay. Hmm. All right. So then, that was Thursday. We went out to dinner. It was. It was Friday. No, that was. Thir- oh, you're right. It was Friday. It, that was Friday. We, so we went out to dinner, and it was, it was, Billy, William, uh, Darren, and I, and, and a couple of gentlemen that we met. Uh, Don and, and Billy. Don's from. Uh, Simi Valley that I think that's where he's from California and Bill's from uh, Wyoming Cheyenne <coughs> and they were traveling together they were doing it they're related by by marriage not that type of marriage they're they're related uh, they're related and, and they're going around seeing each other's families and stuff uh, there's there's a story there but it's personal with them it's, it's it involves a loss and and it's 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 really kind of cool what they're doing so we went to dinner, and just we had a really good dinner. Uh, we were so tired from that day. We we all went back and went to our hotels and went to sleep. Uh, Darren and I kind of talked about the day. No, that was Thursday. Karen Friday. Did. Yeah. Anyway, and talked about we we went back and we talked about the day and, and uh, went to sleep. Got up early in the morning. Went for a walk, shot that video, um, went to the festival, and you know what? I did not go to one single seminar. Work. Um, I spent the entire day talking with other people and exchanging ideas and getting to know people and uh, helping uh, Perma Pasture Farms and EMP Shield set up right next to us. And we know those guys too, uh, their cell staff. Uh, we know them really well so we were actually helping them run their booths when they had to go do business like like get away from the booth Darren and I would step in and, and run the booth for them which which was fun because we got to meet a lot of good people and then when we were when we weren't doing that just walked around uh, got to meet a lot of lot of cool people uh, Matt and Gabby from uh, Homestead for a Living set up next to us with their uh, pop-up farm stand and they shared their ideas with me and, and we're going to start using that we may it we're going to try it and if it's successful we may not even do farmers markets it's it, it might just be easier for us to do this because we can do it when we want to do it and we can do it we don't have to worry about who i have to have stuff ready by s- sunday or saturday well and just off the facebook page the the freeze dried candy has already started doing wonderful i'm shipping out everywhere already so mm. Um, yeah, I, it, it is the best way. When I couldn't even get one farmer's market to even give us an email back saying, here's the official right. paperwork. So. Right, exactly. So if you, if you get a chance, go out and see their, their, their channel and watch them. They're, they're a young couple, and um, they've got it going on. They, they have it wired, and uh, they're going to be very successful at what they're doing. Uh, they, they do a festival themselves. The Back to the Land Festival, which is sometime in late October. No, I think it's late September. <clears throat> so we're talking about going out there if we can find somebody to watch the uh, watch the homestead, mm-hmm. or if we can't watch, find somebody to watch the homestead. I may just send Angela out there with uh, with somebody and have her do it so she can get the experience too. Because Darren and Patty said that that one, that homes that that homestead festival is really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so and that one does a lot and especially if you're just getting into homesteading one of the one of the uh, real things to remember and i'm going to say this just because it's so simple i can't believe i haven't done it before but to have a homestead journal calculate what you've got coming in what you've got going out what the cost is coming in what the cost is going out what mistakes what what 
did you have a thousand different what you thought were butterflies turn out to be pests and you know what did you do to remedy that you want to be writing all this stuff down so that you can refer back next year and, and not have to sit there and go oh what did I do last time so I've I somebody else picked that up from the festival last year brought that back to me and um, it, it, it's amazing she's so. been doing it dilig diligently for the last week Last week. Let's see. Let's see. She sticks with it. Last week. Well, that's when I noticed you doing it. Okay, so that's when you started paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so. But you know, I met, I met uh, two old crows. Mm -hmm. She. Uh, Which their channel is funny. I watched their channel yeah. the other day. Yeah. Randy. Randy just. The other day, I guess he, last night. Randy talks entirely too much. <laughs> really. <laughs> no, no, they're they're good people. They they really are. Um, and then we met, uh, we went over and, and spoke with Rebecca Bush, uh, uh, John and Rep Rebecca Bush, uh, Exit to Build. Uh, they have a big festival down in Texas, and we talked to her about her festival, mm -hmm. and they actually go on farm tours on their, on their festival. That's and cool. Then, and then we met some, some vendors, uh, Serena Lee, uh, we met... Sarah, Sarah Lena. and then we met some other other vendors Sarah, Sarah Lena Love she's a, a musician she lives in, in Nashville she used to work in Hollywood and she's very like minded and she's she's got a lot of new age stuff she worked in Hollywood and she's very like minded she woke up there, there's if you ever run wow. into her there's an entire story there folks I seriously I, 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 I lived in California I know what Hollywood but like. she's got she, she's got new age solutions and stuff and I told her that you you and her were not allowed to play together. Ooh, that means we need to play together. <laughs> Once, when we go out there. Well, you're not allowed to play with Billy either because you'll break him. Oh. <laughs> so, if Michelle hasn't done that by now, I doubt I will. <laughs> so, so we, you know, we, we Darren and I both wandered around and, and, and did stuff. And I, like I said, I, I ended up in retrospect wasting a lot of time because I didn't know how to use his camera and it was bad lost a lot of footage um so the the festival what they did they had a, a big main tent and then they had the vendors in the parking lot and then they had around the back was a food court type type of thing in the gym they were giving a class and and the live feed has both those uh, now that i think about it because there's a camera in there john hired a professional for a videographer to come in and, and do it uh, and then in the the manufacturing floor they opened it up and there were vendors in there and demonstrations uh lord drac the, that was where the air conditioning was just fyi yeah. if you want to be a vendor yeah. and next you time. you could go in there they allowed you to go in there and amanda amanda john's wife sat at the front desk and greeted people and answered questions and just gave people any assistance they need and she's a she's a really nice lady and guys that's just not a festival thing i they, they really are like that um john did a video on freeze-dried candy and i went wait what and don't and, talk about that oh yeah don't talk about that really yeah i'll i'll, I'll, I'll tell you why okay. i'm saying okay so we're gonna so and, and amanda was a really nice lady and she helped people out and uh and just was re really just would talk to anybody seriously and sunday was her birthday oh nice she doesn't eat cake Oh. <laughs> so they, they tried to they tried to find a meat cake for her. <laughs> um, and then the the festival ended and we went out to dinner again. B Billy really liked this Mexican restaurant and it was a good thing cuz it was the only decent restaurant within driving distance. It was it was like 30 minutes away from our hotel room and, and none of us wanted to drive around that much. Um, but we went to eat dinner there again and just that time, this time the EMP Shield guys, Bobby Spaggs, Data, and uh, 86, also known as Andrew, the commercial guy, uh, showed up. Oh, that's that's something else to backtrack. So it was it was kind of neat watching watching everybody just fawn over Billy as a, as a YouTube star. Um, it was really neat. But was even neater was Darren and I both had somebody come up and go, "Hey, I recognize you. I know who you are." Do you feel important now? <laughs> Why do you gotta be like that? <laughs> I'm editing that out. I'm not even going to talk about it because you, you ruined it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin it for you. 
millions of people could potentially watch this and your dog and me. <laughs> so, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. We're reshooting a segment because somebody said something that didn't need to be on film. It wasn't bad. <laughs> anyway, so we were, and, and I'll tell you what, Bobby and Billy are probably the best storytellers I've ever met, bar none. And they fed off each other because they've known each other for a long time too. And uh, they fed off each other. And I'm telling you, folks, my side was hurting. I was laughing so hard. You know, I'm I'm sure the uh, sure the other people in the restaurant didn't didn't appreciate how boisterous we were, but we were we had a really good time. And you put a bunch of old military people together at dinner when they haven't yeah. seen each other in a long time. They're all loud. Yeah, they were. In fact, in fact, I think if I remember correctly. Data and William were the only two, uh, the only two non-vets in the group. Oh, those poor guys. Yeah. Oh no, they 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 were right in there Did with it. Did they hold it. their own? They, they were right in there Good. with it. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about William for a second. So I finally got I finally finally got to meet Billy's son William. And, and, uh, oh, William, thank you so much for the spoon. I love it. Yeah. He sent a hand. He he sent one of his uh, hand carved spoons home with me for yeah. for her. Um, I'll tell you what. At 25, that that young man's got it together. He's he's doing uh, in, on-site permaculture consultations. Uh, he's making very good money at it. In fact, he's doing so he's doing so well at it that he he said he's not going to be able to do the stuff in the Midwest. And uh, we talked about it. And I've got my I got my certificate. I've got my certification from the same place that he went down and, and interned at. But all, all, the only difference is I did the uh, I did the online course because I don't have I didn't have the time or money to fly to Australia. I wish I really did because it would have been fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, he he said that he would if if I was willing to to start doing consultations, uh, he would be willing to pass those on to me. And I, we talked about it. And uh, folks, I think I'm going to take him up on it. I think I am. I think. I think I'm going to start doing permaculture consultations. So, if you live within about a three, four hundred mile radius of, of north central Kansas, <clears throat> longer than that, because I think you're talking about Arkansas, Missouri, Nebraska. It's only Kansas. 581 miles to Tennessee, and it's not Is that it? far to yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. But anyway, the, the if you live in the Midwest. I might be doing this. I mean, we're still. I still got to work out the logistics. Uh, I think the pay's right. I need to kick the kick the dust off my boots and and, and uh, get the cobwebs out and, and make sure that I still got it. And, you uh, still got it. You helped a life done free with their permaculture. Yeah. And I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go help some of the neighbors too. So so be be on the lookout I'll, I'll announce it officially at some point this is just a hey this might be happening uh sometime soon but uh yeah be look on, be on the lookout so uh i might might be able to come to your place and and, and do a consultation with you for uh and and get you started on the on the path but and, and like i said he's he's newly married and and angela and i were gonna give them a, a wedding gift him and his wife and he said if we're going to give him a gift to give a, a donation to uh, vets for vets for child safety so if you want a good cause and and i did some looking up on it and it's a, it's a good uh it's a good good charity it really is it, it helps with child rescue so we went to bed and, and slept got up did my morning walk tried shooting another video for you guys and the dang camera was full and i had to go back and connect it up and, and get some stuff off of it uh, before I could start recording again. And then we went to the venue and we had to do even more watching of the tents because those guys were so busy. Uh, EMP shield, uh, John Willis bought some EMP shields, and uh, Billy, who's a uh, an electrician by trade, uh, installed it right there on camera. In fact, there's a video. Uh, I think it's on SOE. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember where, which one. It's either Permapasture or the SOE. I think it's SOE. But there's an actual video showing Billy how to uh, installing one of these devices. So if you want to know how to install one of the one of the home devices, go watch that video because he does a really good job. Um, Sunday was the day that the, the, 
the big stars were going to be there. Jack Spirico was there, and he gave a, a gave a seminar or a workshop. And Bear Independent was there, and he gave a workshop. And uh, they were both really well received. Billy did his his main presentation on Sunday too. Um, you know, I, I got to meet these guys, and uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. They they neither one of them. Have I, I was subscribed to both of them for a while and I listened to both of them for a while but I quit doing it because I, I got to the point where I didn't like did not like watching them and because the the personalities and stuff I mean, just I'll be truthful um, but now neither one of them are my I, I, I talked to both of them and neither one of them are buddies with me or anything but but my my perception of them has changed um, and they are not they're not as bad as what I thought they were. So I and I know there's a lot of people that, that are the same boat that I am is at, you know feel the same way about them. So you might want to might want to rethink that. Um, Bear Independent especially, uh, he does some fantastic. We ended up uh, talking about his uh, his fight against child trafficking and some of the stuff that he does there. And he's got he's got a really good uh, if I remember correctly, correctly uh, Grandstone Ministry. And they're doing really good work and taking it directly to the to the child traffickers. Uh, they're they're and they're not only focused on recovery, but they're focused on. Uh, right, they're not only fo focused on rescue, but they're focused on recovery too. And which, recovery is very very important, guys. Right. So anybody that knows me personally is on my Facebook page, um, my personal page. They know that. Um, I, I'm very heavily, was extremely heavily involved where I was going and doing speaking engagements and all of that and um, actually was able to, um, we were trying to get started some homes in the Kansas City area because there's nothing worse than, nothing worse than a seven-year-old child being dumped out of the semi-truck on I-70. Right. Right. Okay. But and like I said, he he's he's doing good work. So if, if you're interested in supporting that kind of stuff, I would I would look into it. And he's got he's got a uh, medical supply. Well, it's not really medical. It's medical supplies, but it's it's like he's got an IFAC that is so good that active duty military members get it. And he's got uh, a bucket. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, Pastor Joe Fox was reviewing it, and he gave the the list of what was in it. And I was like, okay, let's go see if we can replicate this. And I was able to replicate it, but A, I was not able to replicate it with all USA-made stuff, like what Bear Independent uses. And B, it cost about 30 to 40% more. And I, I told him that and asked him about it. And, uh, you know, there, there's something about buying in volume. He buys he buys his stuff by the pallet full. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he's able to get it cheaper, and he passes on the savings to you. So I would... I would recommend you go out there and, and look at his stuff. Um, and I really wish, I feel bad because I really wish I could name every single vendor that was there. Um, if you go to the, the Living Free in Tennessee uh, festival uh, page, they might still have the vendors up. I would highly recommend you go visit these people if they've got an online presence because they were really good. I think a lot of them do have an online presence. And so I we've gotten a lot of subscribers and I've been watching and um, oh, the crochet one, I'm, I'm going to have to go back in there. <laughs> She's got some good stuff in there. Yeah. And I was like, all right, so my grandmother taught me how to crochet, but there's some <coughs> patterns and things I just get lost, but she really broke it down well. So I'm super excited to start digging in, but I have to be careful because I have to be able to leave the television. So, yeah. So we, we spent the day doing that. Um, they had a big discussion uh, panel between all the, the, the four big people uh, that were there, and it was really well received. Everybody was, was hanging on every word. Um, we went out to dinner, same Mexican place, uh, had a couple more people tag along from the night before and then some, and uh, just Billy, Billy and William decided they, they needed to go home that night. So uh, the MP show guys and Darren and I uh, stuck around together, and we ended. I don't know how late we talked, but never fear, people. 
never fear. All the world's problems have been solved. <laughs> you can go to bed tonight feeling safe that your your future is secure. Thanks to us. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> yeah. And then we got up the next morning. Uh, poor Andrew. He had a uh, he had a radio call in at at seven a.m. and he woke up at about six fifty-five. Oops. And but he's a. I tell you what, folks. The man's a consummate professional because he pulled it off without a hitch, and and did did a really good job at it. He's he also a bachelor, so you can do that when you're young. <laughs> you know, but we we got in the jeep and we started coming home, um, and of course you saw the the video from Lambert's. Uh, I didn't. I catch didn't get any rolls and no fried okra. So you, mad. Yeah, you don't need that. Neither did I. <sighs> I can watch out I missed. Myself. I missed catching the there. The, one of the kids threw a roll from one side of the dining room to the other, which is a good fifty yards, and he chucked it and hit the guy, uh, hit the guy in the hands with it. Um, you know, one of the things about the drive home that struck us uh, was the the trucks. So we noticed on the way down there that there were more. Uh, late model trucks and you can tell the late model diesel uh, diesels that are pre-def uh, mandate uh, because they've got the square noses and, and such you know like, like late, late 80s 90s ones and we saw more of those on the road than we had in the past and, and he noticed it first and then once he pointed it out I, I noticed it and uh, yeah there were there were a lot more older trucks and and what, what people are doing is they're getting the older trucks and they're getting them uh, getting them ready to go and then they're they're using them so they don't have to worry about the deaf mandate because there's a there is a shortage of, of deaf out there um, and then the other thing was we actually saw one truck uh on the outskirts in nashville that was tootling along at about 45 miles an hour with smoke rolling out of its its uh smoke its exhaust in limp mode which is what happens whenever the the deaf content gets too low uh for the truck it, it throttles it back and and makes it so it can't can't drive as fast uh, so that there was that and i and it, it, it as far as the trucking industry goes i talked to a trucker that was staying at the hotel with us and i asked him about it and he was a fleet driver and he said it wasn't bothering him in the least bit because the company was picking up the cost and he was making more money than ever because there there's so few truckers out there now they he was going constantly in fact, he was only an hour and a half away from home, and he was tired, so he stopped and got a hotel room. Um, and then I talked to somebody at the festival who was an independent trucker, and he said that he wasn't sure he was going to be able to maintain his company. Excuse me. So, so once the, again, it's it, <laughs> the, what you're hearing is true, and it's out there hurting people. And, and eventually, um, I don't know if you watched my uh, food. Uh, food processing video the 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 flow charts um the food food shortage the 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 the, the links are starting to break down people and I, i'm not not trying to black pill you but it, it just it just reinforces why it's important to start trying to be in, independent now start self-sufficient start trying to be self-sufficient mm -hmm. get out of debt um build your community start start taking active control of how you put food on your table and and that that was just that was just a, a glaring example of why we need to do it mm -hmm. uh, we drove got home um, gas prices were outrageous uh, the last time we stopped was in Wentzville Missouri and uh, took my little Jeep Liberty almost ninety dollars to fill up yeah. no. <laughs> And that's regular gas. I drive a diesel. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I was just staying here taking care of the farm, and I had to. I ended up going and getting some diesel, and because um, I needed to run some errands, and I literally uh, looked at the gal. I decided to go get an iced tea, and so I went and paid for the iced tea. And she looked at me and she said, "Is that going to do it for you?" And I said, "Yep. I already got robbed on pump four. I don't need anything else." <laughs> and they both just started laughing and both of them looked at me and all of a sudden serious faces and she goes oh you're not the only one hurting this is bad <laughs> nobody knows how they're going to get to work anymore we're out in the middle of farm country yeah. and nobody knows you know how long 
how long are we going to be able to keep the tractors running? How long are we going to be able to use our equipment, skid loaders? I mean, everybody pretty much relies on diesel. And if we can't do it and nobody can get it there to you, you don't have it. And, you know, we, we have several uh, neighbors that are talking about they're cutting back cattle. They're cutting back on a lot of stuff and nobody knows how much food they're going to be able to produce. And you and I had that conversation. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to go some old school. <coughs> and so that means we're on our hands or knees and, and we're working the rows and doing what we need to do because the diesel, we, we can't keep our prices down if we don't do that. I just looked at the monitor. You've been hanging off side this entire time no, there it's you okay. go. i keep shifting there you go yeah i thought you started out on camera pretty soon folks it would have just been me sitting here <laughs> with this voice coming off from someplace anyway listen it's getting dark uh it's getting late we need to start closing up shop around here i um, got sweet potato slips i need to go count yeah she needs to go count sweet potato slips you know, if just... you guys are in the market you need sweet potato slips let me know you can go down to our description get to the email um, we're going to be selling those <clears throat> 12 slips for $15.99, especially if you're in the Midwest. We still have time. You've got till uh, July. I'm going to say probably the first. Definitely you have to have them in the ground the second week. And uh, But you have I, plenty of time to get your sweet potato slips I would in. get them in the ground before the 4th of July. That, mm -hmm. I, seriously, I would. Yeah. And you can do those <laughs> in raised beds. You can do them in the ground. Just up to you. So I'm, just email us and let us know, and we'll get them out to you. I'll let them know if they're available. Usually, if they're not, they will be within three to four days. I can have them available. I apologize for coughing all the top like this, folks. This, this, uh, this pollen. I don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this problem at home when the pollen got we bad. We didn't huh? have this amount of food on our property before. And I just, I'm telling you, folks, the pollen here is mm -hmm. just killing me. Yeah. At least my nose isn't stopped up. Right. You know, it's just runny. Um. So, uh, let me let me close by saying that that I really really enjoyed going to this festival. I learned a lot. I, I didn't attend any workshops, but I learned so much. And I, we've we've got people gave us great business ideas, and we're gonna start moving towards having that alternative revenue stream. Fund. Yeah. Um, so there was a theme to the festival. You probably should have said that. What was the theme to the festival? Was making a living on the homestead, right? How to make a living on the I, homestead? Think yeah. that was right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the theme. That's quite why honestly. So much quite honestly, I, I I could. I'm agreeing with her. Quite honestly, I couldn't tell you because I was just I, I was just there doing networking stuff and, and. I know people. I know I'm right. You know, <laughs> you know, and and anybody that I met, if I didn't mention you, I apologize because you know y'all deserve recognition oh, i guarantee you he came home and i got an earful of everybody he met and what great people it, yeah. it, he met so and, and i don't think to, he had a, a crossword for anyone and to nicole and john man you guys put on a fantastic festival seriously that was good mm -hmm. the next one is october 1st and 2nd um and there's john announced it john announced it sunday night that they were going to do a four-day butchering workshop the week before the festival um we'll we'll see right. billy billy's up for the workshop but he he was like man I, I in fact it was funny because while while we were sitting at dinner discussing it and billy was saying you know yeah you know they're, they're moving up really, really fast and i gotta get you know i gotta find out if i actually do it when they want to do it john was announcing that they were going to do it and I guarantee you, I, I guarantee you that that Billy will do it if if John presses him to, because Billy wants this to happen, and and he really likes working with John, and and he'll make that happen. And we, so that being said, Midwest Preparedness Project, the camp out for the fall. We're going to continue to press forward on that. Make sure you guys know about it, but you need to know that it, some of us may not be there. Well, either that, either some of us may not be there, or. Uh, the announced dates may change because because some of the some of the key people that are, are in that taking care of that camp out are also involved with with uh, taking a booth to to uh, the, the these other festivals and, and doing that so the the date may change on the on the, the camp out the date may change on the workshop we don't know none of this none of this is set in stone um, all I'm saying is 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 just be watching out for it because it's it's some really some really cool stuff coming along, folks. Mm -hmm. um, the SOE Fe or the Self Reliance Festival grew from about I think they said 100 people to 300 people to almost 600 or over 600 people this time. Mm -hmm. And in the fall, I guarantee it's going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. Guarantee it. 
So, Super exciting. So, to John and Nicole, thank you for hosting us. Hey, to, yeah, and Nicole, if you're watching, I think we need to make the, which way was it? I think we need to make the homestead here. It needs to become a style. I think we just make that the style. I have no idea what you're talking about. She does. <laughs> yeah. To to uh, to the SU, SOE staff and, and Nicole's friends that, that actually put on the, the, the festival, thank you very much. You guys were consummate professionals, and you made it very worthwhile for everybody. And to everybody that attended it, man, I really enjoyed meeting you. Those of you that, that saw me and, and recognized me, I say thank you. Uh, to all the new subscribers. To thank all, you. To all the new subscribers, thank you. And we're going we're gonna to do our best. We're going to do our best to make sure that we, we – hold our hold ourselves to a good standard mm -hmm. and give you the type of content that you deserve mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions or comments leave them below uh, it, smash that like button you know do it with do it with the vengeance man let, let let youtube know you like this kind of stuff be free this is the type of stuff and and when i say this is the type of stuff i don't just just mean us there are other channels out there that are doing the mm -hmm. same thing we're doing building community mm -hmm. promoting freedom mm -hmm. uh, promoting self-sufficiency they're out there Go out there and, and subscribe to those channels. Uh, Man, spread it, the word. a really good one. I did send Lynn an email. Lynn, I sent you an email today, um, United States side. And if you want a really good one, watch Lynn and Wayne out at Homestead Aus. And that's yeah. AUS. And I mean, they're doing this down in Australia with all that crap going on. Yep. You know, we, we at least have a heads up of what's coming. They're in the middle of it. So let's, let's give them a smash and a like and subscribe to their channel and really give them encouragement and support to build their community and um, do what they need to do. And so. I'll tell you what, if you got a story to tell, if you got a story to tell, start a YouTube channel. Or better yet, contact us if you don't, if you don't want to start a YouTube channel. Contact us and we'll see if we can't get you on here and you can be part of our journey. All right? Yeah, because we love learning every day. And if there's somebody else that knows something, it, homesteading are always learning. You never know everything. So, um, any old You tricks. got anything else to say to them? Do you? Yeah, sure. Until next time, guys. Go live a life done free. Hey. You, oh, you know what? I got, I got one more thing I forgot uh, to say. Next video, I think is going to be a, 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 a homestead security video so you might want to you might want to hit that notification bell so you know when it comes out because oh. i think i think you guys are really going to like it yeah I, and I, we're, we're going to try to get another video out i couldn't figure the camera out i i'm kind of an old dinosaur when it comes to technology so um i did some electro gardening we had some storms coming in so uh before the end of end of june uh july and august i want to get you guys on that um garen's mom taught me a really cool way to do it without having to use rods so us girls can rock this and then get that in there so um i do want to do a video on that all right till next time folks <clears throat> go live a life done free that was fucking almost 50 minutes so 47 minutes.